Well, here we are again. So this morning I've been updating um, the Snug CBD website. Uh, Snug CBD sells CBD products. Um, CBD, if you don't know, is the um, calm cousin of uh, marijuana. It's legal. It's based from hemp. Um, the benefits are it gives you the health benefits of uh, this natural product. Lots of people use it for anxiety relief, pain relief, um, helps focus. Uh, it's just kind of a calming thing to do. You don't need to smoke it like you would a joint. The oil is removed from the hemp plant. Hemp is a part of the marijuana family. And um, this oil is then inserted into oils, uh, so tinctures, lotions, gummies, vape pens. Some people vape it. And taking this oil, but by whatever means, gives you this feeling of calm or a, a, a mild pain relief. I personally first fell into CBD when I hurt my back over the Christmas period, lifting a heavy dining room table because I still thought I was a 21-year-old monster of a man that could lift anything. And instead, I tweaked my 50-year-old back and was wandering around, collapsing forward, going, oh! Uh, so I used CBD lotion and... Uh, it was fantastic. So now I take the gummies when I'm working. It really helps me just to give me a little bit of focus and concentration. Sales pitch aside, that's not why you're here. So why are we here? Right. So when I'm setting this shop up on the Snug CBD website, working on the website itself, you can see that the products that appear, we have two main types of products. One is a simple product. Here's an example, the Snug CBD Sleep Pack. And you can see the default for simple products is add to cart because there's one product, one price, and you want to buy it and add it to your cart before you check out. We're running WooCommerce over WordPress here, obviously, since this is a WordPress course. You'll notice these other products, the ones that come with different varieties. So for example, uh, gummies, you may end up choosing different options. So the button says select options rather than add to cart. I just don't like the fact that these variable products have different text. It's accurate, it's saying select the options, then when you go into the product itself, you can choose the option. In this case, it's a 30 uh, count bottle or a 60 count bottle. When you're looking at the options, it then says add to cart. So I see what WooCommerce is doing, it makes sense. However, from this main shop page, I don't like that it has these different text here. There's no way within WooCommerce that I could find any way of changing this select option text. So let's do it using a little PHP code snippet where we basically add a piece of code to the website to say override the default text for this variable WooCommerce product type. How do we do that? Okay, so um, first things first, let me look at my little code snippet which I have on my other computer. Here it is, ooh, it's big text. I massively made it huge. So here's a piece of a uh, PHP code and what it says is add a filter for WooCommerce product types of this text when they're adding to the cart. If it's a variable product, change the text on the button if it's purchasable to add to cart. This piece of text here can say anything you like. So this is the piece of text that by default would be saying select options and I want to change select options to read add to cart okay so if, even if you don't know PHP just copy and text uh, copy and paste this piece of code from my blog article which will be linked somewhere down here around here um, and it will make the magic work I'm not going to go into too much detail about the PHP um, how do we add this piece of script into our website well it's easy uh, most of you will probably be using um, a child theme so if you look in your child theme folder you'll have a functions.php and you can paste this into the functions.php. That's the established no overhead on the website way of doing it. It's very easy. Uh, no, it's not very easy. It, you've got to FTP onto the site or use control file, uh, the control panel. Uh, there's a much easier way of adding code snippets to your WordPress website. And it's using a plugin uh, called My Custom Functions. So let's go and add this plugin. So here we are, we're going to search for one called My Custom Functions. I think there's a couple of plugins 
with the same name but I'll show you the one that I like to use it's by Space Monkey Chimpex or something here we are <clears throat> so my custom functions this plugin here by Space X Chimp I've used this on several websites and it just works it's free works perfectly it's got some nice functionality in there so I'm going to install this plugin one of the nice things about this plugin is you just pop your PHP code into it and you've got a slider that you can turn on and off to activate or disactivate that piece of PHP code so you can see it in action so here's my custom functions running I'm going to activate it from this screen here and then we'll go into the plugins option I'm in the WordPress control panel as you can see once this comes back saying it's activated these are all of my plugins now looking down through my plugins here it is my custom functions and it's running so let's go to settings and see what we can do in here how my custom functions works is yes hello space x chimp thank you well pleasure i like this plugin as well we turn it on and off using this slider and then we click save so let's take our piece of text which i had in my notepad you can copy this from the um, blog article i'm just going to paste it into the body note that we don't need to put the open bracket question mark php and stuff at the beginning and we can put multiple multiple scripts in here you could add this filter add another filter do something else lots of the times i want to make little changes in the website i'll have a whole bunch of different scripts running on here once you've got this pasted in here's my text that i'm going to replace um, i just turn it on and i click save once this is saved my website is slow it's in development I've got all the debugging turned on and all that jazz here it is saved if I go back to my store and I simply do a refresh that script is going to run on the background just before this page is displayed and boom voila all of these buttons have now changed to add to cart it's only for the variable products so if I went into the custom functions and uh, let's say that just to show you right if I change that to add to variable and save the changes once that's saved if I go into my shop and refresh it I'd expect to see the add to variable just on the variable products this snug sleep pack should stay there we are you see the variable products are all changing neat right neat super easy to use let me put it back now wait if like me you're a fat sausage fingered programmer there's a good chance that you're gonna break this script if this script breaks or it's an invalid PHP script WordPress will poop itself <laughs> that's a polite way of saying shit to bed because it's gonna it's gonna say ah there's a PHP script put into the header and it's all corrupt so let's deliberately break it so here's the script all looking good now if I look at it looking good let's go back in and press refresh I'm expecting to see it just saying add to cart right we know that so when I fresh it here is my add to cart screen beautiful now let's break it let's say that I go in and I put in now we know that's going to be duff right so when I save it I think this will immediately break the website there's poor old WordPress coming back saying I don't syntax error there's a script being injected it's a critical error the website is broken indeed if I go back to the shop page and I refresh here oh disaster the whole website's broken what am I gonna do luckily there's an easy way to go in and just say right tell this plugin to stop injecting we can't log in we can't go to the admin panel we can't do anything but we can do it using FTP or the control panel so either FTP into your file structure on your website what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use the control panel here's me logged into the control panel on my website so go into file manager this is what you'll see through file manager or through FTP go to the root of your um, files on your server go into WP content from WP content go into the plugins so we're going to the root to WP content to the plugins here we are we see the files that make up all the plugins on our website there's my custom functions if we go into my custom functions you'll notice a little file down here called start if we just rename this to stop what we're doing is we're telling WordPress at a server level don't run this plugin don't inject this code with the crappy bit line of stuff in there 
So if I go back into the shop and refresh it, I'm expecting to see my shop to come back to standard without that code override running. And there it is. There's my shop. It's back. Whew. The website's back up and running. But it's still got this old select options running on there, right? So now I can go back to my plugin page and refresh here, and I'll now be seeing my plugin script. Of course, the web the plugin thinks it's running, but it's not because we've got that stop on there, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is turn it off and remove this crappy piece of code. So this all looks good to me. It says add to cart. The PHP looks good. I'm kind of happy with how this PHP script looks itself. So I'm going to save it. Once I've saved it, it's still not running because of that stop statement. But if I go back into my control panel and I rename that stop back to start, it's now running that plugin once again. Oops. So here's my plugin. It's running. So again, at a plugin level, I'm going to turn it on and save the changes. And once that's saved, I go back to my shop and this WooCommerce script will be making changes at a website level. Wherever it sees select options for variable products, it changes them to add to come up. And there you go. It looks a bit nicer. Um, this website's coming together as I design and build it. I'm generally pleased with it overall. Now, uh, what else can I tell you about it? If you're going to be adding scripts using this technique through my custom functions, it makes it a lot easier than putting it into the functions theme, uh, child theme, sorry. I'd highly recommend that you take any script that you have and run it through a PHP validity checker. There's a whole bunch of them out there. Um, which one would I use? Um, PHP code checker is as good as any. If you're going to PHP code checker, paste your code in and analyze it. Depending on the version of PHP that you're running, it will always tell you if it's good. If, for example, I've done something stupid like that, ZZZZZZZZ, and analyze it, it tells me, oops, okay, there's a problem. Line eight is returning with a ZZZ in front. You can always tidy your code up yourself. Make sure you analyze it. Make sure you're happy with the script. Go into custom functions, paste it in, turn it on. If it blows your site up into file manager, change the start to a stop, fix the script. It's neat. It's a neat way of doing it. Um, it gets a big thumbs up. Thank you, SpaceX Chimp. Um, that's it. In the meantime, go and buy something from uh, Snug CBD. Try it out. Try out the uh, tinctures, little drop you put under your tongue, or the gummies, which are excellent, um, or the chapsticks. Buy your girlfriend a bath bomb. And uh, I'm going to add a coupon code to let you guys have a discount over on the website. If you enter, how about I go in and I'm going to record another lesson now on how to add coupon codes to WooCommerce. That's coming up next.